All right, you guys, happy Monday night. Welcome to Team Play Hard's weekly team call. My name is Ellen, and um, my dog just started drinking out of the toilet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm super excited to hand it over to Jake. I really don't think Jake, for our team, needs an introduction. He's basically our team celebrity. <laughs> he's, like our, he's, like, he's like Jake. Everybody knows who Jake is. Um, and I, I, I do want to say this, and I did want this to make it to the recording. Um, if you didn't hear Amy Silverman's call today, it was like outrageously outstanding and the perfect way for us all to start the year. Please, please, please. Actually, most of you guys who I'm seeing on live already, you, you already have seen it. So please, if you're watching the replay, please, if you're part of Team Play Hard, please watch that replay and don't just watch that replay. Everyone in your organization should watch that replay. So make sure you're tagging them and that we keep bumping that up. So I'm super excited because I listened to the national wake up call with Ashley Molstead today, which was fantastic. And then Amy Silverman this morning, and then now we get Jake. So it's just like a massive like PD um, building day, I think. So I'm gonna turn it over, Jake, to you and mute myself, take it away. Well, thank you. Um, welcome everybody. And um, yeah, happy 2018. I don't think I've said that to the team yet. So uh, welcome to the new year. Um, I am going to be talking about something a little different than the generic fitness nutrition uh, business approach. I'm actually gonna be talking about personal finance. Um, how many of you know that I'm a finance geek? Does anybody? I think Ellen does, but, but yeah, it, it, I keep it under wraps, but it's, it's true. I'm really into finance. I'm really, I'm not that good at math, but I'm into numbers and how they work. Um, so anyways, um, full disclosure, it's important. Everybody knows that I have zero certifications when it comes to finance. I'm not a financial planner, not a financial advisor. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to give you a synopsis of a financial financial plan that I like with the hopes that you hear enough good things that you'll go and do your own research. Okay. So I'm, I'm not wanting people to take my word for this. I want to give you the gist so you can go and educate yourselves. If you like the plan I'm going to present to you. Awesome. Go educate yourselves on it, but please no, I'm not a financial planner. Don't listen to me except for the stuff I'm about to say. You get it. Um, and also guys, if you have any questions, unmute yourself. I can't read the chat and talk at the same time. I just lose my, my train of thought. So just unmute yourselves, cut me off. Um, don't feel bad about that. Okay. Um, so diving in the, uh, the plan I'm going to be talking about is the Dave Ramsey plan. Has anybody heard of Dave Ramsey before or like Dave Ramsey? A few head nods, yeah. He's a pretty, uh, pretty big, big name in the, uh, in the financial game. Um, <clears throat> so a quick little bit about him. He, uh, he's this awesome Southern guy. He's got a great accent, really family oriented. Um, and basically he's anti-debt. There is one little exception, but for the most part, he's anti-debt, zero debt. Um, uh, I'll go into the one exception later on in this, but just think anti-debt. It, it makes a lot of sense uh, to me and hopefully it does to you as well. Debt can get us all into a lot of trouble, can spiral out of control easily. Um, something unique about Dave Ramsey, and this is th this might resonate really well with some of you and it might uh, not resonate as well, but he's he bases his financial practice on uh, biblical beliefs. Now, I'm personally not religious, um, so for me, that part isn't a super strong part of it, but I still think regardless of whether you're religious or not, the principles, the financial principles apply regardless. So um, that might make you like him even more if you're religious. And otherwise, I think the principles are still amazing. So anyways, just full disclosure, some people are surprised by that. Um, so anyways, finances can be really overwhelming. Um, there's a lot to it. It's hard to know where to start. And so Dave Ramsey basically put together what he calls the seven baby steps. And it's basically a step-by-step -step guide to get us out of debt. You know, I, I wish I, I should have brought some numbers to tell you that the amount of debt in the United States alone is insane. And it's just wreaking havoc on, on all, all kinds of, you know, marriages, for example, relationships, um, you know, just our, our health in general. It's, it's not a, it's not a good thing. So 
Anyways, to simplify things, he laid out the seven baby steps, like I said. So I'm just going to basically walk you through these seven baby steps, and um, and that's going to be my presentation. And there's going to be opportunities for questions if you have them. I'll answer as many as I'm able to. But diving in, baby step number one, he says to save $1,000 as an emergency fund. Okay, so he really likes this to happen as fast as possible. We should involve narrowing down our budget selling stuff on Craigslist, selling, you know, garage sales, whatever, um, picking up extra or side jobs, cutting out silly spending through budgeting, stuff like that should be laser focused, get that thousand dollars. And that's the very beginning. That is step number one. Okay. Um, from there basically set up, uh, he recommends setting up its own little, uh, savings account. So you just keep that $1,000 in the savings account. It's not to be touched. It is an emergency fund. It's only for emergencies. This will be your primary safety net. So that's baby step number one, pretty straightforward. Number two is when we start attacking debt. And he, uh, Dave Ramsey calls this the debt snowball. So once we have our $1,000 saved, he says everything else goes towards paying off debt. So his approach to this is actually listing our debt smallest to largest. We're not worrying about interest rates at this point. I know a lot of people are confused. They, they think, well, why don't we attack the one with the largest interest rate first? And, and mathematically, I understand that makes a lot of sense. Um, Dave Ramsey formulates it around his principle, starting with the smallest, ending with the largest, to create momentum. So that way, when we're starting off, say if you just have a $400 credit card you need to pay off, that's a pretty quick, pretty approachable uh, thing to cross off the list. And once you, once you free up that money, once you cross that off the list, it feels good. You move on to number two. So you're making progress and little by little momentum builds just like a snowball rolling down a hill. So by the end of it, when your biggest, largest, most daunting debt is the only thing left, you've already cut out all of the other debt above it. So all your finances are going straight to this, straight to this big one and it goes way faster. Okay. Making sense so far. Cool. I love this stuff. I, I hope I don't geek out too much, but <laughs> bear with me. It's really fun. Um, <clears throat> and a quote that I found by, by on their website, which I, I thought was really uh, pertinent to baby step two, kind of touched on what I just said, but basically it says, when you start knocking off the easier debts, you'll see results and stay motivated to dump your debt. As each debt is paid off, your cash flow will increase and the bigger debts will be gone sooner than you think. Before you know it, you're debt free. Okay. So that's baby step number two. Baby step number three is we're just going to enlarge our emergency fund. So um, baby step one was get the $1,000 fund. Now we're going to enlarge that into three to six months of expenses. So this is our, this is our bigger safety net. This is where, you know, we'll be protected if a big medical thing comes up or a job layoff or, you know, roof replacement, you know, some big things that cost a lot of money. This is going to be our safety net. So we never have to go back into debt and scramble and, and, you know, take out loans or credit cards to cover these things. We'll have our own backs covered basically. So for most people, I mean, you'll want to do your own calculation on what three to six months of expenses looks like for you. But for most people, it's about 10 to $20,000. And once again, that's going to sit in your emergency fund. That's not going to be touched unless it's an emergency. And that's, uh, once again, protecting you from major emergencies. Okay. From there, this is where the growth begins. So baby step number four is saving 50, 15, sorry, one, five, 15% to retirement. Um, so if, if you have a job, for example, that offers a 401k with a match, that is the first, you know, that's the first place to go. That's wonderful. That's free money basically. But we're, we're going to put 15% of our gross household income into retirement accounts. That's important. Like if you're making $40,000 a year, but your household income is $20,000 or two, $200, go with the $200. Go with the big number. Push yourself. Okay. Um, now, this is for long-term savings. It's retirement account. So um, he, he aims at the 15% mark. He recommends the 15% mark because that, that's his numbers have shown that that's a, a good balance, um, but it's not supposed to be um, invested in risky investments. It's supposed to be fairly stable growth stock mutual funds. He does a whole breakdown on his show, which I'll tell you about later. Um, but keep in mind, long-term, slow and steady, safe, not to be used to buy things. This is for your future. Um, so anyways, best option is 401k if there's matching, but he also really loves Roth IRAs if, if you don't have a 401k matching plan for your employer. Okay. 
Um, and Roth IRA, if you're unfamiliar, it's basically a, an uh, individual retirement account in which you pay the taxes up front. So the entire growth is tax free from there. You don't have to pay taxes when you take it out. Um, Along these lines, if you are needing help with investments or you have questions about accounts and setting things up, um, if you go to DaveRamsey.com, there's a smart investor section, smart investor, basically smart investor together, um, in which you, he basically endorses local, uh, local financial advisors in which you could sit down and have a meeting with. He, he really uh, vets them well. He, he has specific things he looks for and people that he, that he endorses. So um, he basically looks for people with the heart of a teacher. So his, his whole stance, if you leave there feeling, feeling dirty, feeling like you don't really understand, that's not someone Dave's going to endorse. So, um, I think that's, that, that's a really nice part of his approach. He's looking out for, for us. All right. So, uh, before I move on, any, any questions? Did you say that smartinvestor.com for that list? Um, it's at DaveRamsey.com, but oh. there's a smart investor section. Okay. Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> so recap, we have a thousand dollars saved in baby step one, baby step two, we did a debt snow snowball paying off all of our debt, smallest to largest. I forgot to mention, this is, uh, not including the mortgage in that part. That's, that's uh, consumer debt. That's credit cards. That's college, uh, college loans, stuff like that. Okay. Um, we're going to attack mortgage later. Then baby step number three, we uh, increased our emergency fund to three to six months. And then baby step four, we just saved 15% to retirement. That's wonderful. And then baby step five, if you have kids, this is where you're going to be setting money aside for their college. Um, if not, you can obviously, if you don't have children, you can just skip this step. But this is basically where a good opportunity for you to set up an education account. Um, so do it early on so the compound compound interest has uh, you know an opportunity to take take hold. Um, he he basically recommends two different types, I guess three different types of investment here. There's the 529 college savings fund, which has some uh, some tax advantages. There's also the ESA, which is an education savings account, which also has tax advantage uh, advantages. Then there's obviously just a standard mutual fund. Um, which once again, these are, these are things you'll want to talk to uh, a smart investor about because depending on states, there's going to be different advantages and depending on your, uh, you, you know, your income, there's going to be different advantages to the different options I just mentioned, but 529 is a good thing to look into. And the ESA, the education savings account is, is some nice tax, tax advantaged accounts for education specifically. Now, once you're saving for your children's college, if you don't have any children, you just skip baby step five until you do have ch children. And if you don't ever have children, then I don't recommend saving for their college. But baby step six, the next one is to pay off the home. So basically, we have our emergency fund. We've got ourselves to zero debt except for a mortgage, right? We have retirement savings in place. There's college savings going on that's hopefully making money each year for, you know, if you start when the kid's uh, born, probably have 18 months or 18 years of growth there, which is wonderful. So paying off the house is the next laser focused uh, point. So um, I, I looked at some numbers and on his site, it says the average family that gets actually laser focused on this uh, can pay off their mortgage in five to seven years. And that's wonderful. A lot of people just let it run for 30 years. Um, and you know, that's a ton of interest that you're paying out to billionaires. Um, that's a lot of money that you could be saving and putting into your own home, your own family and your own account. And um, so anyways, it's just a wonderful, wonderful example of what happens when we're able to remove all the other consumer debt. And now all of our income and all of our extra money is going to towards a mortgage that's supposed to take 30 years. And the average family can cut it out five to seven years. That's really wonderful. From there, imagine with zero debt, zero payments at all what you can do. It's pretty exciting. And then from there, once the house is paid off, baby step seven, you build wealth and you give super generously. Dave Ramsey is a, a wonderful mindset. He loves money. He likes what money can buy and he loves giving. And so a big part of, uh, of his approach to this is 
helping us build wealth so we can not only change our entire family tree, our entire family dynamic for future generations, but we can also give, um, you know, basically endlessly. And um, his whole motto, I love this quote, live like no one else so that later you can live and give like no one else. Basically, when you're paying off debt, cut out all the fancy stuff, like forget about the nice cars, live like no one else. So later, once you acquire wealth, you can, you can do pretty much whatever you want and you can give and be as generous as, as you want as well. It's a wonderful thing. So um, baby step seven, the building of the wealth. It's, it's basically you're maxing out your 401k and your Roth IRAs if you're able to. Um, you're, you're either you know, buying, buying real estate, maybe rental properties, mutual funds. You know, you're doing some smart investments and um, basically never go back into debt again. So. That's the, that's the basic format. I did mention the, uh, the exception to his debt-free motto for those of you that either are considering refinancing your house or getting, getting a mortgage yourself. He does um, see the benefit of getting a mortgage if you, if, you know, he sees it as a valuable way to build wealth, buying a home. And so the one bit of debt that he does allow in his plan is basically a 15-year fixed mortgage rate as long is your payment is no more than 25% of your monthly take home pay. Okay. So in some cases, you know, if you live in a really expensive area, it's hard to find a place that's no more than 25% of your monthly take home pay. And what that means is that we simply need to save and save and save for a massive down payment so that we can afford the payments on a 15, 15 year fix at 25% of your monthly take home pay. Okay. Now, Places where you can find, find Dave, Dave Ramsey. I mentioned his website already, DaveRamsey.com. Um, I don't spend much time there personally. I listen to his podcast like crazy, The Dave Ramsey Show. You can find it anywhere there are podcasts. He also has, has uh, radio shows. I think he's up to like 600 radio so shows across the, the United States um, and probably Canada as well. Or I don't know. It might be worldwide. But anyways, tons of radio shows you can hear him on. And then the book, uh, the book that's... Uh, apparently changed tons of people's lives. I haven't read it myself, full disclosure, but it's called the total money makeover. Um, it's a New York times bestseller. And, um, so I think it's only like, I don't know, 10, $12, uh, on Amazon, something like that. So seems like a really good investment. And then, uh, lastly, if you prefer to go to a class, do a lot of hands-on things, especially, um, maybe with your significant other, he, uh, he has classes that, um, are, available across the country called Financial Peace University. And I believe they're only, I'm trying to remember, I think they're just over $100 for the class. And so um, some good opportunity to be in a class format, especially with a significant other, building and strengthening a relationship and, and getting debt free. So anyways, that's the basic, that's the basic uh, gist. That's the plan. That's what I am following myself, really happy with. And so, like I said, um, you have all those different avenues to explore. If you're interested, if you, if you heard things that you like, um, and I'm happy to repeat these or I can put them in the chat as well, but podcast is basically the Dave Ramsey show. You can find them on, uh, on a lot of radio stations, which you'll probably have to go to his website to find those radio stations. But the book is the total money makeover and the class is financial peace university. So that's my financial nerd out for, for, uh, for today. Let's hear, uh, let's hear questions. If you guys have them, did you need clarity on something? Did I go too fast in any, any specific part? Um, on, on step two for the debt snowball, yeah. isn't that where you pay off the smallest and then you take the payment from that and apply it to the next one and then keep going so that you're building on your payment and then you're building on the debt to make it go way faster. Yep, smallest to largest. But I mean, in terms of the payment though, don't you take the payment from what you were already paying and just apply it to the next one? Oh, I think, uh, so I think I understand your question. He basically recommends to pay the minimum payment on everything except for the one you're focusing on, except for the, except for the smallest. Is that, is that what you uh, are asking, well, Jerry? Well, no, so I know that, but... I'm pretty sure like if you're say you're paying $500 a month on your credit card to get mm -hmm. it paid off. Once that's paid off, you take that 500 you were paying and now pay it 
to the next debt. Oh on yeah, top you'll, of the minimum payment to get throw, that snowball effect. Yeah, you'll throw whatever you can at that at that next debt. So that'll obviously include what you were previously paying for the first one, and hopefully a little bit more if you can if you can narrow down the budget. But yeah, I, sorry, I understand that one. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I know there's other questions out there. Don't be shy. Kim, have you done this? I saw you hold up the book. Yeah, I have the book here, Little Money Makeover. And Perfect. I, I've been to one of his seminars and I've listened to him religiously and um, I ignored him for a while and then I started listening to him and uh, very, very helpful. And I, I like, um, you kind of said it really nicely, but basically he says to sell anything, get rid of anything so that the kids are afraid that they're next. That's what he says. Like, you yeah. know, just like, <laughs> you know, get rid of everything that you don't need. Yeah. Yeah, and I love um, because Jake turned me on to his podcast, and it's um, it's so good. It's so good. Uh, it's kind of anecdotal based on, you know, he takes calls and stuff, and I love how he, he talks about um, beans and rice and rice and beans. Like, he uses that phrase a lot to the point that, like, I say it all the time in my family now, and I think about it all the time. I think about, like, I, the littlest expenditures of money. I just want to trim the fat off my budget. It's been, it's huge for Jan and I this year. And, um, I, I, I mean, we definitely have time if you guys have more questions, I hope you do or comments, but, um, it, you know, Amy talked on the call that she led today about how a lot of people in her team become sober and not even that they're alcoholics per se, but that just a part of their culture is like getting rid of alcohol because who needs it when you're trying to live a really healthy life. And I love that. Um, I loved hearing that. And I, I, I love, I would love the idea of us adopting that as a team, but, and, but anyway, this is something I want us to adopt as a team as being, and I know it's not like Jake said, beach body related per se, but we want to be financially fit, not just physically fit. And so I would just love it if our team became like part of our tribe and culture was that we're all debt free and we're all doing the snowball and we're all trimming the fat and talking rice and beans and having this mindset of living like no one else so that we can live and give like no one else. And so um, I was super excited that Jake delivered this call and I, I hope you guys feel excited about that too and want to be known for that too. And that's a way we can serve what we're hearing about servant leadership left and right. And Ashley Molstead talked about it. Amy talked about it today. So it's been on my brain today too. And this is a way we can serve ourselves, our families, our loved ones, but each other and people that we bring onto our team. Like if we can get people to lose weight and get people out of debt and, and, and not that we're financial experts, but this works and it's Dave Ramsey's idea. So. Yeah, exactly. We don't have to be the experts. That's kind of what I was saying here. Um, I'm not, I'm not the expert, but I can, I can guide you towards the expert and we can do that the, the same for our clients as well. You know, what, what's one of the biggest things we get, what, the biggest objection is financial, right? And, um, and so if we can not only help people with their fitness and their health and their nutrition, but also their finances, like imagine the impact we can have on people. But anyways, I'm not saying we got to go like, send everybody Dave Ramsey. You might have a different financial plan you like, but, but the principle remains that it, it's so cool that we have this ability to help so many people in so many different ways. Any other questions, gang? I love Tammy's uh, picture. I keep looking down and I think she has something to say. <laughs> I love her picture too. She looks like a wild child party animal fun girl. <laughs> he also has the Entree Leadership podcast as well. That's yeah, good point. Good point. Wait. Yeah, that's something that we could all... Uh, no. What was that? That's not Dave Ramsey. It's one of the Ramsey personalities. I forget who leads it. Is that uh, Christy Wright? Yeah. Or um, yeah. So Dave Ramsey has all these other uh, people that are associated with him, other financial planners, and they all seem to kind of focus on a different aspect. One guy is really into the the, the post retirement 
um, kind of leaving a legacy sort of thing. There's the entree leadership aspect. So there's different people on the Ramsey team that have different, um, different podcasts, different books of their own, different radio shows of their own, but they're all connected to him. Mm, okay. I thought that was Lewis Howes. I don't know what I'm thinking. Entree leadership. I guess I'm wrong. Two to one. You guys win. <laughs> All right. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I think it can only enhance our testimony, so to speak, in terms of like, it's, it's attractive to people, the side of the business, at least it was attractive to me that you can get out of debt and that you can, um, you know, that money matters. And, um, this will only, this will only enhance that side of what we do. It is part of what we do. So, um, you guys, uh, I'll J Jake, do you have anything else that you wanted to add? Per se. I don't think so. I could, I could go on. There's, there's other things that are even deeper than this, but I just wanted something fairly bite sized for y'all to, to, to listen to for now. So I think I'm, I'm probably pretty, uh, pretty happy with the information you guys have received so far. What would be your number one, like practical application step to do for them with this information? Would it be like start list download, like subscribe to the podcast tonight or get like, what would be your number one? What can they do? in response to the call tonight or what can we do? Um, I, there's Tammy. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I would, I would start uh, absorbing the information from the source from Dave Ramsey. So, uh, you know, for me, I, I don't often make time to read. So I do prefer the podcast myself, the Dave Ramsey show podcast. Um, if you're a reader, then the total money makeover, I've heard nothing but good things. Uh, and Kim, Kim is nodding her head at, I've, you know, I should probably read that. I, I feel like I consume most of the information on the podcast. Um, but if you prefer to read, pick up that book. I've heard really good things. So yeah, I would just get in front of it. You don't, uh, I'm not attached to any of you liking it or resonating with it. You know, if you prefer something else, if it doesn't make sense for you, then that's, that's great. But I think, uh, I think the principles here will, will touch at least most of you. So. I am. I am. Oh, sorry. I also University looked, by Tammy. Cool. What, Kim? Um, I also looked up back at Summit 2014. We had, um, oh shoot, I just had his name. Oh, Chris Hogan. And he spoke about the baby steps. Mm. And um, it was awesome. it was, I think we were in Vegas. That was yeah, awesome. He's one, the, he's one of the Ramsey personalities, too. Yeah. Oh my gosh, he was awesome. He was so funny. That was, that was in Vegas? Yeah. That was in Vegas. That was pre Shebbits. The dark ages. <laughs> Dana, you like that water bottle? $10 on Amazon. Jackpot. Yeah. Putting people left and right. <laughs> All right, you guys, so if you haven't already, we want you to subscribe to that podcast. Jake's being modest, but when we were talking about this or boxing about this or something, he told me he – He's listened to it so much that he can like predict the answers. He can like pr he predict like what Dave Ramsey, how he's going to respond to the people that call in. So it's pretty cool. Um, so I'm going to call him our resident expert. <laughs> um, okay. Here's my takeaways. I mean, my calls to action for you. Make sure you listen to that Amy Silverman call. Um, make sure you tag any coaches in your downline and like they just need to start the year with it. I actually tagged some coaches today that have been like off the grid because like what if they want to come back on the grid? It's the beginning of a year and that was a good place to kick it off. Um, of course, the national wake up call. I'm sure Sherry will post the replay if she hasn't already. Um, but you can post your, she hasn't yet. Okay. You can post your takeaways under that to keep that popping to the top. Make sure all of your coaches hear this and let's create, it would start with us. It would start with you guys that are here live. Let's create just like Amy talked about in her set your soul on fire, that there are coaches that choose sobriety, even if they're not quote unquote alcoholic, let's become people that implement these steps and that help people really become debt free, <laughs> starting with ourselves. Um, what a great way we can serve our networks. And then lastly, it's team cup time. 
Um, I was traveling this weekend, so I'm like a little tiny step behind where I normally am in terms of getting registered for something like that. So I need all of y'all's help. I know some of you are already registered and on a team. So talk about that in the team page. Make a graphic of your people. Post it in there because um, you guys are the leaders and um, you guys are the people that show up and lead. So um, what you do rubs off on the other people in the team. Um, Amy talked about that too, is giving back. So that's how we can give back is start some energy and hype around Team Cup. And I guess that's a wrap for tonight. Yeah? I think so. All right. Okay, and thanks we, for hopping on. What? I said thanks for hopping on, everybody. Seriously. It it's, means a lot when you're the one. When you're the one. Okay, I have to ask though, do you have a puppy fund? You have a college I? fund, you can have a puppy fund for <laughs> toys and everything. <laughs> I should, yeah, toy fund? Yeah. <laughs> It'll be like a million dollar fund by the time I retire. <laughs> so many toys. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> You're back there, king bed to herself. Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks right, guys. again. Thank you. Bye. Have a good night. Night. <clears throat>